you. Hi, my name is Mary Wong, and I'm a registered traditional Chinese medicine practitioner and acupuncturist, founder of Alive Holistic Health Clinic, and author of the book, Pathways to Pregnancy. Tonight, I am really, really honored, and it really touches my heart that Buff was here to speak tonight, because in my book that you've read yourself, um, these are stories of people that have gone through the journey and have, you know, in one way or another, come out on the other side. And you're actually my first person that has agreed to speak about your journey while you're going through the journey, you know, um, because, you know, what is the end of journey? Really, the end is the beginning because you either have a baby via your womb or um, go child free or go through adoption or go through donor or surrogacy. I mean, there's so many different ways. Uh, am I cutting out? I no. no. Okay, great. Thank you. So thank you, Bafoa, for being here to share your story as you go through your journey right now. And I, that really is heartfelt. And I think you'll make a huge impact on you know, all the people that will come across this. And I hope many, many will and really learn from that because I've seen a transformation already in you. And so I would love to um, have a little more insight and allow people to hear you know, what your journey has been and including, you know, the specific background information. So yes, your, your name is Bafoa. And yeah. um, how old are you? I am one month away from being 35 and I'm holding on to the 34 with my dear life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because of course, in the fertility world, 35 30. is that magic yeah. number. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, for those that do not know, 35 is where they say that, you know, you become uh, reproductively old or geriatric, so to speak. And uh, when did you start this journey? How old were you? So it, it will be two years, uh, actually in September, that we started this journey. So we started, we we're both 33 when we started this journey. We had no reason to believe that the journey would be challenging for us. So we started on this journey and we thought that, you know, a couple months later, we would be able to have a child, no problem. And that has not been our journey so far. So after about eight months of trying, um, you know, I do have a family history of fibroids. So I thought I should maybe get things checked out. Went to my family doctor who herself sort of, uh, commissioned sort of an uh, ultrasound of my uterus. She found a few, um, there are a few fibroids there and she uh, suggested, she said, you know, you can continue to try or you can, I can refer you to a fertility clinic. I panicked. So we went to the fertility clinic. And so since, you know, since last May, uh, we've been kind of under the care of a reproductive endocrinologist. When we first started the journey, you know, we already knew I had fibroids, but we, they did a full workup. Um, and they did find reason to believe that I probably have endometriosis. Um, they also diagnosed me with a low ovarian reserve as well. So, so, and how was that for you? I mean, you go in there, as you said, you thought you're going to be getting pregnant within three months or whatever it was. Yeah. And all of a sudden you are at the fertility doctor and they tell you all this. How do you receive that? What was well, that like for you? All I heard in the room was my husband is fine. He's perfect. Everything was amazing. And you're the problem. And it just made me, I felt such a sense of pressure. I felt terrible. I felt like it was all my fault. So uh, that was a hard thing to hear. And then I heard low ovarian reserve. And that that sentence followed me for about two weeks. So I was just devastated because I, you know, you hear that and you think there's no way you're ever going to conceive naturally. So it was, uh, it was hard. Of course. I mean, I can't imagine. Well, I can't imagine because I was there yeah. <laughs> myself. <clears throat> different story but you know for those who haven't read my book I have another story myself personally but 
what's wonderful is that, you know, when it's difficult to swallow like that, and it's, you know, when you first take it, it's like a prison sentence. And yeah. um, so how did you navigate your life after hearing so this? Have, so from that day through to, I would say this a couple weeks ago, my life has been a bit of a fog. So, you know, the next step, the doctor suggested IUI. So we did a couple IUIs, didn't work. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, you said prison sentence. I felt like it was a death sentence, actually. I just, right. I couldn't see, there was no, the sun wasn't out anymore. There was no joy. I was miserable. Um, we luckily enough, got a funded cycle very quickly after getting on the wait list at our clinic. And so after a few failed IUIs, we immediately moved to IVF. Um, emotionally, uh, that was the worst decision I could have made, but financially I was, we were propelled to do it. Um, in the meantime, I had started doing, coming to your clinic and doing acupuncture. And I had also joined a fertility support group, a mindful fertility support group, which was great um, and taught me how to be in the moment, but it, I was not in the right place to receive that information. So it was an amazing experience and I use that now, but at the time I just, I, I was in crisis mode and I couldn't retain. Um, mm. So we did the, we went through the beginning stages of IVF and, you know, to be honest with you, I can't even really remember. I remember going into the clinic vaguely. I remember doing the needles, but it was, I was in a fog uh, and I had placed so much hope on this cycle. Um, and then, you know, after a very traumatic um, egg retrieval, um, that was actually an amazing wake up call for me that I was not ready to proceed. So, you know, they retrieved some eggs. We were always going to do a frozen cycle. So there would always be a bit of a gap. And the gap went from being a one month gap to a five month gap. Like we still haven't done the egg retrieval because I was just not. Sorry, wait, wait, back, ready. back up, back up. Uh, yeah. You mean you have frozen yeah. embryos? You just yeah, have not we gone back for a transfer to pick transfer. up the embryo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, we haven't done the transfer yet because mm -hmm. I wasn't, I just emotionally wasn't ready to do it. And I recognized it. When I realized I wasn't ready to move forward, we were going back to the clinic after the retrieval and I had a panic attack. I couldn't even walk into the building. And I knew at that moment, like, this is, this is, this is not what I need to be doing right now. I need to focus on myself. So um, I kind of had a very big breakdown. Um, and then I started doing the things people told me I should do to make myself feel better. So that included, like, I started going to a fertility therapist. I started doing yoga. Um, I started coming to actually to see you directly. And out of all of those things that I did, the only thing that stuck is actually coming to see you because... I'm not a yoga person. It doesn't work for me. I just, I was doing it. It actually made me miserable. I was meditating. I just could not do it. Um, and I, the ther I left the therapist in tears every, every time I left. So I realized this is not, this, these are all the things people are telling me to do, but it doesn't work for me. Right, right. Well, and I want you to be a bit more specific, just because I don't want people to walk away with yoga's bad, med meditation's no. bad, therapy is bad, right? It's just, no. it didn't work for you. Yes. And I would actually, I'm recalling that it was also, I mean, no disrespect to the therapist, but it wasn't a good match, right? It was not a good match. And mm -hmm. in retrospect, what I should have done is found a better match because there is value in it. But for me, it wasn't a good match. And yoga is not, yoga is wonderful. I used to do it all the time. But for me, it was not, it did not make me feel better. It felt like a chore doing it for me. But for others, it is a source of, you know, of, of release. So I needed to do something that worked for me. And I needed to stop. I would go online and read 
so-and-so did X, Y, and Z and they got pregnant and I would emulate exactly that and it worked for them, but it wasn't going to work for me. So when I say all of those things are good, it's just, you need to do the things that make you feel better and not the things that people tell you to do. Like that's one of my biggest, that's in life, a life lesson for me. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. I think it's very clear. And that's why I always say it's like, you know, nobody's a cookie cutter, right? Like we can't follow things. You can't fit a square peg in a round hole. And that's what I find a lot of people do, you know, get into this desperate mode. And yes. so you look and you search everything online and you just follow it all to a T and that becomes a chore. Well, how gratifying is that? How soulful is that? Exactly. And so then it just made me resent the journey and be upset about being on this journey. And it made me feel worse. Mm -hmm. So when I started coming to you, you said something about, um, you always talk about being authentic. And I just decided, and that, you know, you said to me, you know, I'm not treating you for fertility. This is about getting you in balance. And that really resonated with me. And at that moment, I like, lights came on for me and I decided to take the next few months and focus on me and living my life and finding joy again. You know, my friend said to me at a girlfriend who gave me this necklace that said, find joy in the journey. And I, at first was like, how dare she give this? To me? But now I, that necklace is just exactly my mantra because I'm on a journey and if, you know, walking through life in that fog was horrible and I'm still on the journey, but I'm folk, I'm happy. I'm actually happier than before we started trying. So this is, wow. a blessing. this is because I was just, I thought I can control everything. And this has taught me that there are some things in life you can't control and it doesn't mean it won't happen, but it's, you know, it, I've learned the, what patience actually means. And mm -hmm. I, that is a life lesson that will, you know, you know, should we be uh, lucky enough to be parents? Patience will be important. And this has been the greatest test of it. Well, the other thing I um, heard, not through this conversation, but just about um, self-respect in this journey. So I recall you, um, I would love for you to share the story about you being at work and about sure. a colleague having a baby. Okay. So uh, at work, a colleague of mine uh, recently became a new dad and he brought the, his, his wife and the new baby into work. And I was in my office and I could hear, I could hear that there was a baby there, but I just couldn't bring myself to going out there. Um, because even though I'm, ha I'm better and I'm happy, there are just still some things that I'm still working through. And I, and I know that's okay. And I've given myself the space to realize that there are some things that are going to take longer to work through. And a colleague of mine said to me, um, you know, you're such a bitch for not coming out. And the old me would have been angry and not talk to the person and let that stew. And but the new me who is no longer ashamed of being on this journey uh, you know, I'm in good company with a lot of other people who are on this journey, who have been on the journey. So the next day, I went up to this person. And I said, just so you know, I'm on this journey. It has been, it is, you know, it's, it's a work in progress. And there are some things that I just can't bring myself to do. And that's one of them. And of course, the person felt bad and didn't mean any disrespect by the comment. But I it was really liberating to tell someone that I'm not close to that I'm on it because there's nothing to be ashamed of. And that is taking me a long time. I would, I remember walking into work, coming out of the clinic and like rip the bandage with like where I got the blood test and I didn't want to where I had been. And because I, you know, I work with enough women that they could probably figure out where I had been. But, you know, I just, I'm now at the point where, it's not my fault and I have nothing to be ashamed of. And while I want to respect my privacy and I don't want everyone to know, there are times where it is okay to let people know because I have to give them the benefit of the doubt as well. Very nice.
And I think this is the piece of transformation that I think is so pertinent because as you said before, you just look online, you follow all the instructions of what to do, what not to do. But yet what was missing and what now has transpired is that you're actually looking in a way of a different way of being versus let's do more. So it's not about doing more because everybody wants to do more in this journey. And I'll tell you, I'm sure everybody's already done too much. It's doing too much. <laughs> and really the focus is, is pertinent to actually look at yourself and look within and, you know, look at how we're being in life. And, you know, you went from being dead, as you had said, to now it sounds like you're alive more than anything and engaged in life. And there are moments where I am, you know, it, it is hard, but there are far fewer of those moments than before. And so that, that is, you know, it's, I, before being, this journey was in my second job because there was like 15 things I needed to do and 20 books I needed to read. So I come home and like my next job was like figuring out how to have a baby. And that that is really stressful and that's not helpful. And so there's a difference between being armed with information and information overload. And there's, it's a fine balance. And I, I found it reading, you know, I read like so many books about fertility. Then I read yours. I'm like, I should have just read this one because, (laughs) and it's not plugging your book, but it's true for me. It resonated with me. I could see myself in the stories. But for some people, they need that information. For me, sure. it was stressful reading all that information. I think it is stressful reading all that information because it is overload and you want to do everything. And, yeah. you know, it's, again, the authors have great intentions. Absolutely. And they're all great yeah. things. Absolutely. But, you know, you can't do everything and, and, and like, not feel stressed by it because you still have life to go live through. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I think really this is brilliant and I love how you are, you know, engaging with your life differently. And as you say, we don't know where it's going to go. I have high hopes for you, but you know, as I always say, I guarantee nothing. Like I've been around the block a few times and I see that there's great possibility. We just don't know when we don't know how we don't know where (laughs) because it's maybe not in the bedroom or the kitchen. (laughs) Right. Right? So um, we don't know how it's going to look like. And, and, and that's okay. And I hope that, and it's also okay to have those down times. I just love it that it's, you know, less of the down times. I mean, this roller coaster ride, right? You know, is it a little less turbulent? Is it a little less frequent? Right? Because it's every, sorry, go ahead. It absolutely is. Um, it is it's you know it's probably not a super roller coaster it's now like a pg rated roller coaster there's a bit of it but it's not as bad but it, you know it's um sometimes you need to go through the swings to and cuz that sometimes helps you figure out whether you want to keep going right yes. and that's and that so i use the low moments to find, it's my opportunity to say i don't want to do this anymore i don't want to do this right now or I don't like, I want to keep going. So even in the lows, there's learnings for me. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'll take the lows as I get them. Yes, that's great. And, you know, this interview is not about, oh, gee, be positive and think positive, because that's not what it is. It's about embracing everything. And you exactly. are doing that full heartedly and authentically. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. So what's next for you? So, you know, um, it's time we had given ourselves the summer. So the summer is ending where, you know, I have started doing some new things with, with herbs. So, you know, I'd love to see where that takes me because it will lay a good foundation for whatever we do next. Um, I think we're thinking about doing uh, another uh, IVF round to get a few more eggs and we go from there. But, you know, I, one thing that I do know, regardless of where this journey takes me, that, we will live a wonderful okay oops you just cut out for a second you just cut out repeat that it was a really good thing i what i said was um no matter what happens we know know we'll live a wonderful life and we'll be okay and so 
that is something I feel like I can go into another IVF round better prepared because I have that mindset versus the mindset I had at the time, which was, if this doesn't work, you know, forget it. So I'm ready to go into a new round. If that's where life takes us, I continue to be hopeful that we can do it naturally. But if we have to have a little science baby, that is okay as well. And, you know, if it doesn't work, we'll pursue other options. But right now we just remain hopeful. That's great. And, and I love it that you're being open. And the other thing I love is that now you're embracing another per, potential, another round of IVF, not from a place of desperation, like, oh boy, you know, I'm turning for 35 and I'm getting older, but really coming from, it could be a possibility doing it through science, as you say. So embracing it in a different way, outside of desperation, outside of death, right? Because when you're going into it, desperate i just don't know how well the body works with that anyway you know there's not well, a... mm -hmm. I, I know that, i know that it didn't work mentally for me and so it can only it can't be good for me physically and so i i you know if there's one thing i would say you know if you if you were going embarking on an ivf journey just ask yourself if you're ready to do it and if you, you know, you will never be 100% prepared because there's so many twists in the journey, but just <clears throat> know getting yourself into it and ask yourself, are you ready for whatever comes your way mentally? That's correct. Because I, I, think I did not know that because the focus, be when I talk to people who've done it before, they focus on the physical, like how hard it was on your body. And for me, that wasn't even the hard part. It was the effects on, my, on me mentally that I was not prepared for. Right, absolutely. It is very mentally, emotionally challenging and financially as well. So, you know, even though we live in the province of Ontario in Canada, where we, there is one IVF funded cycle, really it's actually just a discount, isn't it? Because you yeah. still pay absolutely. through the nose. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know how it works. Yeah. So even though it's funded, it's like a yeah. discount. You get like, you know, 10% off. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for sharing. Is, is there any last words of wisdom that you, you know, you're dying to share with everybody that's watching? Or not? Um, I, no, I do. I think um, I, I continue to be, to guide myself with, you know, difficult roads lead to beautiful destinations. And I remind myself of that often lead to be, uh, beautiful destinations. And I res remind myself of that and just find what works for you and know that you're not alone. And there's a lot of resources out there that can help you. There's groups, um, just find what works for you. And there's not, you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Thank you so much. And it is so true. And, and, and really, I actually speak to this. And that's why I wrote it like this. And I, I really made it story-based because that's how people identify. At least you did. Absolutely. I don't know about everybody else, but, you know. And you're actually not the first person that said that. I had another person, uh, uh, like, uh, two weeks that came. And they, they found my book. And they said it was the best book they've ever read because it resonated with them in their experiences. Absolutely. Yeah, because storytelling is people's lives, right? And, Absolutely. and that's how the book works. And um, so thank you for saying that. And I'm so glad it resonated with you. And so for those of you watching, if you haven't picked it up, please pick up the book Pathways to Pregnancy. If you're a practitioner watching, your patients will benefit for sure. And um, if you haven't tried acupuncture, definitely do acupuncture. And again, you know, for the most part, I would have to say it really resonates with most people that try, even for those who are needle phobic. However, you know, there may be some 5% that will just say, you know what, it's not for me. And, and I don't say, and I will not say that you have to do it in order to get pregnant. That's for sure. You know, do a journey that's empowering for you. And sorry, let me rephrase that. It's not about doing the journey. It's about being in the journey. So be in your journey, be in your journey and be engaged and live your life now. And then you never know. Thank you. Can I say one more thing? Because I know you yes. told me we have to keep you half an hour, but I keep talking. But one last thing about your book. 
my mom read the book and she found it helpful to support me in the journey. So not only, you know, it's a really good resource for your family members that are trying to support you who maybe never gone through this before, because it allowed my mom to, to better understand what I'm going through and understand this path, this sort of more natural path I'm trying to pursue right now. So That's I just wanted to say that. Wow. Thank you so much. And I think your husband read it too, right? Is that right? My husband read it. My girlfriends read it. Like people, <laughs> people I, you should get me, give me a cut of your book. I <laughs> failed. Um, because, but everyone who has read it has <clears throat> found it's resonated with them and it's allowed them to figure out how to better support uh, me or wow. themselves. In the journey, so. Wow, thank you for that. I totally, this is not like a paid testimonial, I have to say. <laughs> Let's just be clear about that. I just wanted to have you tell the story because I'm so impressed and so honored to have you here. Like, truly, you are making a difference. So thank you. And that's what I espouse to do. Like, I want to help make a difference to people. And you're doing that. So thank you. Honestly. No, thank you for having me on. And thank you for everything you've done for me. I know you don't want, love this, but... You've, you've been uh, tremendous in my journey and I wouldn't be here without you. So I, I really do thank you. <laughs> thank you. I have to graciously accept this. I actually have a new, I have a coach, if you can believe that. I just started this. And one of the difficulties I have is accepting compliments. So I'm just gonna like reel that in. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> See, we all have our journeys. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, but well, we gotta sign off because it's been a while. Okay, so we're done. Hopefully, okay. we're not losing interest. So, <laughs> thank you all for um, you know being on and listening to us, and uh, do reach out. And you're not alone. Look at your local support groups, therapists, whatever works for you. Okay, and join me next Wednesday. And they'll be surprised because I'm not looking at my agenda and I don't know what it is. <laughs> next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, check out my book, Pathways to Pregnancy, which you can find anywhere. Um, you can go on my website, maryong.life, and certainly click on this and um, like my page, Mary Wong RTCMP. Uh, go on to my website, maryong.life and uh, sign up and get put your email address in there so I know who you are. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you again so much, Bethwa. Thank Have you. Have a great night. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. See you all next Wednesday, 8 p.m.